Do you know that if someone has a fear pattern, they, they report they have anxiety or fear issues, that their incidence of coming down with the illness is almost the exact same as if someone's morbidly obese. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So fear and anxiety, it'll uh, jack up the immune system. Produces acid. Whew. Throws off you your make hormones. Make yourself sick. You're sleeping, your cortisol levels. I mean, it's, yeah. But, I mean, you think about during the normal holidays. It's like when people are around their family, usually the family stresses them out. They're traveling. It's colder. They're going to office Christmas parties. They're drinking. They're having lots of sugary desserts. We're having the mashed potatoes and gravy, which staying is all up carbs. Late. Staying up late, not getting getting sleep. They got to deal with the uncle or the auntie that yeah. they've avoided for years, yeah. and now they got to sit next to them. Yep. Yeah. They think about you know buying gifts and traveling on planes, and people always get sick during the holidays. It's because y- your immune system gets weakened by the foods that are put in, the lack of you know good healthy exercise green juice, things to neutralize the metabolic acids that you're taking in. And eventually you get exposed to a, a flu or a cold virus or whatever, and then your immune system's already maxed out. And that virus is like, it's like the tipping point. And then your body goes into a detox mode and you get a cold, you get the runny nose, you get dandruff, you get snot, you get mucus, you barf, you get cold sweats, diarrhea, all those pleasant things that you get when you get the, the flu, but it's really your body is, that's how your body, de- so a cold really and is your body detoxing And then someone will take itself. the meds because, oh, I need to get rid of the runny nose. I need to get rid of the diarrhea or the nausea. So I need to take a medication to lower the fever. When the reality is, as you mentioned, that your body is actually trying to clean up and function the best it can or get you back on track. So rather than treat the symptoms, clean up the stress. Yeah. That's like why Green juice. Know, I never get the colds or the flu or hay fever or any of that stuff anymore unless... I was a drink a lot or eat a lot of garbage, food or whatever, have, have a weekend, stop exercising, not get sleep, be stressed out. Then I'll, I'll get sick like everybody else. But that's why I've always stayed committed over the last 20 years to juicing and doing the smoothies and taking the salts and exercising and doing all the things I do is because I don't like having a runny nose. I, you know, I spent 30 years of my life not being able to breathe through both my nasal passages unless I was taking uh, like nose spray or whatever. And that's pretty unpleasant. And then getting to a place where you can actually breathe through your nasal passages all the time and you're not, you know, every little bit of pollen or dogs or whatever cause your, your nose to run. It's like not having to deal with that, not getting the flu. I mean, I would get the flu every year. I'd be sick for two weeks and then it would finally go away. And about three or four weeks later, I would get it again. Not as severely, but then that would take another two weeks. So literally I'd spend a month every year just sick with the flu, trying to get over the flu and just not having to deal with that anymore for the last 20 years is that's a pir- paradigm shift when you can go from being sick all the time it's like anytime somebody gets cold or the flu when i was younger i would get it so as in that, that you know throughout the year i was you know every other month i'm getting a cold or a runny nose or hay fever or whatever and i don't have any of that stuff anymore nice yeah that, and and it's interesting how your curse at an early age turns into your gift later on it seems like the people who come into the office that have the most passion for being well and really appreciate it, it's because earlier in their life, they were jacked up. They had, you know, major illnesses. They had immune system challenges. They had, you know, whatever it was that was significantly impeding their life and their freedom. Well, as they get older and they get that turned around, they are amazingly passionate about health. So, so that uh, sometimes your curse at an early age can end up being your gift. Yep, your you, wounds become your strengths. Yeah, when you get to the other side, it's 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 fuel. Yeah, so emotionally, I'm very highly emotionally motivated to avoid being sick, avoid not being able to breathe through my nose, and that's why I continue to do all those things. I, I mean, I don't feel like making spending 45, 50 minutes making juice or going to Whole Foods and buying all that stuff, but I do it because I always think focus on how I'm going to feel. And I also think about how crappy I'm going to feel if I don't do those things. So I'm going to literally experience pain by being lazy. And, you know, I used to think that the more healthy you become, the more tolerant your body would be. But actually, the opposite is true. The healthier that I've become, the less tolerant my body is in any kind of abuse. So if I eat some garbage, I feel worse quicker. Your body gets used to it. It's like an ex-smoker. When someone, have you ever seen that? Mike, when someone's smoking, they've been smoking for years, they quit smoking. 
once they work through it, I don't know how long it is, but a few months in, uh, for not smoking, they cannot stand the smell of smoke. If there's someone else smoking, it makes them sick. They just can't stand being around it. So I always say it's like an ex-smoker. Once your body gets healthy again, you become even less tolerant of the toxins and stuff. That's a very, there you go. very interesting. <laughs> that was the right answer. I, th- I, think, it, I, think, it's, I think it's like a, a religion. You know, some people go, you know, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good Christian and I don't do this and I don't do that and I do that. And as people, they go, mm, I don't know if I could, I don't know, you know, I still want to watch porn or whatever, you know, you do. But it, the way you guys both talk about your different modalities, I don't know if that word is the right word, but it, you guys are very passionate about it. So as a guy that, that you know, have a milkshake or a hamburger, I go, Koi does look good and for his age and, you know, as you can see, he's, I mean, but I don't know if I can do that. And so the same thing, you know, like you, Mike, if you come here and we're going to make you feel better. But I go, man, it's just, just a lot of, uh, what's the word? It's uh, a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass, but it's a, a, it's a big, uh, a big paradigm shift. Cause he's like, you know, I'm going to, I want to go to this office every day. I want to read the same books. And this guy, I, I don't know if you guys were, what's Jordan? What's Jordan Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. I'm I'm Googling. I'm writing that because I'm going to Google him. And when I get home, it's go, what the fuck is that guy doing? Right? What is? I want to know what you guys know. I don't know if I ever get to wherever you guys are in terms of, let's call it self actualized. But I don't. But I don't know if I get there. But I want to. I want when I hang around you guys, I want to hear the what. I go. Oh, that's who is this guy? You know what is he? And yeah, so it's interesting that I don't know if I'll ever get as passionate or as as. Uh, uh, What's the word? Not uh, passionate about it, or or be into it. But again, it's fascinating to what, listen to you guys talk. I could I could listen to you guys talk all day because you're like, mm, maybe I could do a little bit of that more, a little more of that. Or you need to hang out with Corey more. Self actualizing yeah, people right. must be what they can be. Uh, what is that? Where uh, people, your peers, is your what you're likely to become. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the expectations of your peer group. You know, back in the day when we were in real estate and Andy and all those guys, we were all, we were young, we were hungry, we wanted to make it, we wanted to make enough money so we could buy the things we wanted, we could experience the things we wanted, we could travel where we wanted to, go in, drop $7,000 on a Rolex in an <laughs> afternoon just for the hell of it, just so we could say we, we did it, stupid things like that. And then, Mike, you should get a Rolex too, I know, man. right? You have one, right? So you he, feel better about it. He's like, hey, Mike went and got a Rolex too. But see, the thing about it is you <laughs> both are leaders in, 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 in that, those areas. Like, So you obviously have leaders and you know you this Epstein guy and you know this and uh, uh, Anthony Robbins. But it's interesting that even in the position that I'm in, I certainly I'm not where you guys are, but people look at me and go, Mike Metters is so positive and he's such a sweet guy and he's this and he, he likes to tell people. And so I have to catch myself and go, I'm people are following me, which, you know, then I follow Corey and follow you. So it's interesting – Different stages in your life, people are, certainly people followed you, and a lot of people that you know. And again, the well, same thing. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but you know, you, you, they wherever if you have something going on in your life, people tend to follow you. You know, like I if they people follow me, go, you're Mike, you're so this and so that. I go, listen, you don't know. I got a guy named Corey. No, you don't know. You, I'm nothing compared to that guy. So it's it's interesting that on a diff, on the different level, people are attracted to you, right? I mean, they. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I would agree with you. I would say that people are drawn towards clarity. So when you find someone who's who's healthy, when you find someone who who's got something, you're like, yeah, that makes sense to me, you know. And then and then the more you get into it, the more you you can learn. So I say, great people copy, mimic, steal, and plagiarize. Right? You find something. <laughs> right. Hey, I like what this guy is doing in in, in the uh, real estate industry. Well, then you you spend time with him and you and you copy, mimic, steal, and plagiarize so that you can. Bring yourself up to the next level. Yeah. Corey and I have been doing that in uh, in in the health industry for for decades. So yeah, man, gl- glad we could share yeah. a little bit with you. And then the, the same where I'm at, I've definitely grown a lot, but I'm always borrowing from other people just the same. Right. You know, in that same, you guys are both said to talk about. Even though you look at you and you and you guys, and you go, they probably don't need anything from anybody. But I've heard you say you have coaches, and I've heard you say you have coaches. So it's like, wow, you think they're at the the top, but uh, you know, who is at the absolute top you know who is the guy that goes i don't need a coach i'm a coach myself you know like and it, yeah that's always find the that people interesting. i was what was it michael jordan had a coach at the top of his game 
Yeah. When he was smoking everybody, yeah. he had probably multiple coaches. Tiger Woods. Tom um, Brady. He's got a bunch. Yeah. Multiple coaches. Sure. I would say that anybody who's uh, higher to the top of their, their performance, they have a coach in, in whatever industry, in whatever endeavor. And if they don't, they're probably not going to be at that level for very long yeah. before they get passed up. I talked to you before we started and talked about, and you go something about, you go, yeah, I need somebody to work on me. So that, I mean, that's interesting. Like you think oh, you're yeah. like, no, I know I can touch myself or what, you know, it's fascinating that I've tried to touch myself. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get the same I response. Set you up. Yeah, it's it's better when right, other people right, do. Right. For whatever I think reason. about you, I touch myself. <laughs> Remember that with divine? Yeah. 